Well, you just saw a video from our last baptism uh, celebration, and that was a lot of fun. We had 11 people baptized, and you could join that next party, which uh, we're dreaming about one for the summer. So you'll see in our app notes, if you've downloaded our app, you'll see at the bottom of the page, there's a link to that. So I just want to invite you, if you're interested in, in water baptism, uh, it's an important step in your relationship with Jesus. We'd love, love to celebrate with you. By the way, my name is Pastor. Pastor Jay, honored to serve here as a campus pastor and excited for Easter. He is risen. Amen. This is great. Great for you to be here. If you're a guest, I uh, just want to say welcome to you. Um, and it's been a, a, a fun, you know, holy week, as it's called. And uh, this last week, been really full with lots of fun things. Um, I was just reflecting on these things uh, the last, just the last few days. I, on Thursday, as I finished up work, I stopped by the Oakmont Bakery to pick up a couple treats to deliver to a few folks, and that was a lot of fun, delivering some joy. And uh, by the way, the bakery was hopping, uh, right? I mean, uh, so that was, that was fun. And then we had a Good Friday glow service here. That was, Good Friday was here. It was packed, and then we had Glow, which was for our kids. That was packed. Um, um, we had almost, I think we had 90 kids, and we had uh, about 250, 60 people here. So it was a packed house for that, a lot of fun for that. Uh, yesterday, um, my, I, I went with uh, my wife and um, sister-in-law and my daughter and to help uh, my wife and daughter uh, help them pick out some new clothes. I really helped a lot with that process. As in, I drove the car, and I pushed the cart with the clothes in it, and I made all kinds of suggestions, which they totally ignored. <laughs> but they did great. Um, and <clears throat> we even did, even though my kids are teenagers, prepared a few Easter baskets. Anybody do Easter baskets, that kind of fun stuff? All right. So I, I, I said, hey, you can still get an Easter basket, uh, which, which that was fun. And they made me hide it, hide them in the house. <laughs> They wanted to do that. But here's what I reflected on through these last few days. Why does this all matter? What's the big deal? Why does this matter? Um, that was the question. Why does Easter matter? And here is what just resonated in my, my heart. Because the stone was rolled away and that Jesus is alive, we now, even though we live in a broken world that's full of sin and hurt and pain, we can now be whole again through Jesus. We now, even though there was once a time where purpose was broken and shattered into a million pieces at the fall, now it can be put back together because of Jesus because he's alive. We now know that even though there is pain in this world, we can find healing and peace because Jesus is alive. That's why this matters. We now know that death doesn't have to be the end because Jesus is alive. So Easter matters, and that's why we can celebrate, and that's what I want to talk about today. You have a reason to celebrate. I want to look at this passage again, uh, Luke chapter 24. We've been in Luke the last few weeks. If, uh, if you're just joining us in this series, uh, as we're wrapping up, you can go online and watch the, uh, um, the Way of Love series. Uh, we're on part seven, the conclusion, and we're going to pick it up here. Uh, um, Bridget gave us a little chunk of it. We're going to go back through that because that's the most important part uh, and then give you a few more details. So out of the New Living Translation, but very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed in the hands of sinful men and be, and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this, 
So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. You know, in this moment, uh, the women who were followers of Jesus came expecting to mourn, were dressed like, hey, we're here to mourn. They brought spices, which was something that they were going to put on the body of Jesus for the final burial uh, or, or uh, put it at the, at the bottom of the tomb for, uh, it, was a, it was a tradition. And so they were coming with all these things with this expectations and dressed this, this way with their head down and thinking about this. You know, they were prepared and maybe dressed in the wrong way. Anybody come up, come to an event, go to an event where you're overdressed? Anybody been in that experience before, right? Or underdressed, that's the worst, right? All right, so there's this moment where it's like, hey, the angels are, are, are stopping and saying, wait, this is not that occasion. This is not that occasion. This here, it's a time to celebrate. And that goes for us too. And Bridget alluded to this, and it's, it's, it's great because this is the theme for, for today. Jesus gives us a reason to celebrate every day. Not just Easter, Easter. Every day. Every day he is risen. But we have a challenge to that. This is our problem. This is the struggle that we have. We think that celebration is conditional on circumstances, that we should only have something specific, something that we expect or want or hope for or work for or pray for, something specific. Then I can celebrate. Then I can have a good day. And with that in mind, I was thinking uh, um, a couple weeks ago, Duquesne basketball team uh, had a big win, a big upset in the tournament, and it was this huge thing. Uh, but before that, when they won their conference tournament to get into the, uh, into the tournament, okay, that championship game, uh, I was watching this on a Sunday afternoon, and it was really cool. And if you didn't see this, there was a moment of celebration that was unexpected. And we're going to take a quick look at this right now. He's got it on the run. They got Fairstone. Gives off to Jackson. My goodness. Oh, my gosh. They got Confetti falling right now. Confetti is falling on the floor. They're going to have to stop playing. We can't see our notes. The players can't work on this court. Confetti is everywhere. <laughs> Somebody hit the wrong button. I love this. I love this. This moment was so great. I was watching this. I've seen so many basketball games. I was like, I've never seen this happen before, ever. You know? I love that line. He's like, Somebody hit the wrong button. <laughs> Somebody hit the wrong button. Now that button was for, at the end of the game, hit this button as the team celebrates. And somebody hit the wrong button. I think, I think, because you're watching that and you know it's, this shouldn't be happening because the game's not over. The game's not over. And we often struggle with check the scoreboard mentality, which is, you know what? If I'm winning today, then I can celebrate. If my circumstances, if the things that I am hoping happens, that I believe should happen, that I pray would happen, I'll celebrate when my circumstances get better. I'll celebrate life when life isn't so crazy and busy. I'll celebrate when I don't feel so bad about myself. I'll celebrate when God provides me with a new job. I'll celebrate when God answers that one prayer. Fill in the blank. This is a struggle. Whether you're a follower of Jesus or maybe you're at this point where you're saying, hey, why does Easter matter? I want to know more. This is very important. Easter, he is risen, that Jesus is alive. It's everything. It's the reason we can celebrate every day. On the third day, Jesus broke 
the scoreboard. He broke the scoreboard. He's saying, I'm the scoreboard, and I win, and you win when you say yes to me. That's what it is. He defeated, he defeated death, sin, and shame on that day for all time. For anyone who says yes to him, he ushered in the new covenant, this new promise of grace and mercy for all who want it. He made a way for you to have life abundant in this life and the next. He gave us eternal hope. He showed us amazing grace. You have a, you have a reason to celebrate today. This is the good news. Your daily scoreboard doesn't matter if you know the way of love, if you know Jesus. Even when things look in ways that you didn't expect, that you didn't want, that you didn't pray for, you're still winning. You still have a reason to celebrate if you know the way of love. The stone, listen, if we had like a live look in Jerusalem at the tomb of Jesus, guess what? The stone is still rolled away and the tomb is still empty. So you can celebrate. You can celebrate. Jesus gives, a reason, gives us a reason to celebrate every day. The disciples showed up in basically, you know, in, in morning clothes with things to morning at what should be a party. That's what the angels were saying. What are you doing here looking for the dead among the living? They showed up with, with things to, to mourn with. But you know what? What they really needed, as I was reading this, they needed confetti. They needed streamers, right? Uh, and Pastor Josh uh, in our kids area, uh, we were talking about this. And during this message, you may hear some celebration downstairs. Uh, he has some, like, confetti poppers, you know, those things that pop. And, then it's, and I said, that would be cool. Maybe I should do that upstairs. And then I remember, you know, my son's on the custodial team. So I was like, I don't think he wants me to make that big of a mess up here. So uh, I found this, uh, this, this device to, to demonstrate what you should be doing every day that you could celebrate every day that there could be streamers and confetti in your heart and your life and your family and everything and this is this is the this is it yeah it's like that right isn't that cool yeah yeah this is what it should be happening in your heart and your mind um see i cleaned up for my son look at that so nice of me um by the way, we have uh, one of these for your family as you leave today. Uh, you can use this for a photo op. Uh, he is risen uh, a moment that you can share. Uh, but just like the tomb, here's the thing, just like the tomb was moved so you can find forgiveness, life, hope, and purpose, Jesus wants to move you to hope, purpose, and wonder. Those are the three things I want to share specifically with you today. In this scripture, in this moment at the tomb, we see these three things happen. Jesus wants to move you first from grief to hope. That's what was happening here. The angel said, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? It's an important question that applies to us even today. The tomb was empty. Everything had changed for that moment and forever, but Jesus' followers expected to find death. They expected gloom. They expected to mourn. They even put their heads down. They were in that mode. This encounter applies to us today because here's the thing. We have expectations. We walk through life with expectations. We walk into our workplace, into students, into your schools, and you have expectations that are based on circumstances that are temporary. But with Jesus, it can be different. We can, it can be different. We sometimes expect the worst and believe the fears, and we sink into darkness. But the angel's question is important for us today. Why are you looking among the dead for someone who's alive? What does this mean for your life? As I was reflecting on this, I recently had coffee uh, with a Riversider. His name's Thomas, uh, and this is Thomas. Um, and we had a good, good chat 
Um, Thomas has been a great inspiration to me and to many other Riversiders. Um, in the fall, this last fall, uh, he was... Uh, he had a tumor that was found in his stomach, and it was growing. Um, by the time it was in December, it was the size of a football. And uh, I remember going to visit him, and uh, Pastor Mike uh, also visited him. And they, uh, the week of Christmas, I believe it was, gave him one week to live. That was Tuesday. And, uh, you know, some, some doctors gave him a different medicine and just this, we were praying with him and an amazing turnaround. Uh, and every day when he walks in here, and he said he'll be here at 10 o'clock, uh, but he said, uh, uh, every day he walks in here, I just see him, he stops, and he raises up his hands, and he looks to heaven. And we talked about this and I'm like, you know, you're like a walking testimony of hope. This is the way it should be. He's like, I'm just so grateful for every day. Every day. Even though he's, he's still carrying something. And it's such a great testimony uh, to me and a great rem reminder. Because I think in our lives, we want to look at, and the enemy, you have an enemy that wants you to look at your circumstances, look at your past, the dead things. The things in your past, your shame, things like that, that Jesus says, that, I can cover that. I can take care of that. I make all things new. He wants you to look at the old things rather than the new things, the dead things rather than the living things. And for us, for us, we need to be looking for life because Jesus gives us a new life when we say yes to him. Look for life and just to illustrate this one more, in one more way here, and thinking about this, uh, it's springtime, so there's actually life, right? And, the, and you're seeing the flowers, the daylilies are popping everywhere. It's so great pulling up even to my house and seeing those bright yellow flowers. And so thinking about usually going and, and getting some flowers. Who goes and puts flowers in pots? Anybody ready to do that in the next three, four weeks, right? We got to wait for a couple more freezes, right? But when you go to a nursery and you go to, to buy flowers, you don't go to the fertilizer section. You don't go to the fertilizer section because really fertilizer is a lot of dead stuff. Right? You go to where there's life, where there's seeds, where there's plant, where you see that. But the interesting thing is, here's the beautiful thing. And maybe you're struggling with this and you're looking at your past and you're looking at the hard things, uh, the, the dead things, and the enemy wants to keep pushing you in that direction. Here's what you need to remember and realize is just like when you go and you plant things and you put compost, which is a lot of dead stuff. God wants to use the things of your past, your dead stuff, the pain, the hurt, and all that, and he's going to use it to grow something beautiful in your life. He's going to do that. That's what he wants to do. But you don't need to walk into it. Just trust that he'll use that. He'll use the past things for your, your past tests, uh, the, your current test as a testimony. He'll use your mess for a message, a powerful one. So I want to encourage you. First thing, Jesus wants to move you from grief to hope. The second thing he wants to do is he wants to move you from puzzled to purpose. I love this moment where the angels actually quote uh, Luke 9.22. If you read that little part where the angels say, hey, he said this was going to happen, all right? Go back to Luke 9.22. It's almost verbatim of what Jesus said. So here he is. This, here the angels are reminding them, this is what Jesus said, remember? This was going to happen. He said this was going to happen. They forgot the instructions, and Jesus gave them a reminder. With their memory refreshed, the followers of Jesus went from puzzled 
confused to purpose. These women embrace the mission of go find the one right after that. When they remembered, they're like, oh, now I know. I know he said this. He said this was going to happen, that he was going to raise on the third day. We have to go tell someone. So they run. And by the way, if you've ever struggled with, hey, uh, women and leadership or anything like that in the church, I always point to this, this scripture as the starting point of why we affirm women in leadership and we believe it's, it's scriptural. Because the most important message of all time, Jesus is, al Jesus is alive, was first delivered by women. First. So that's powerful and affirming. So they went from what, we, what do we do right now to who do we tell first? So they, there they go and found purpose immediately. Jesus is alive and here's our purpose. Go tell someone. Go tell someone. Go tell the other followers of Jesus who spent all this time and heard the same things over and over. Hey, Jesus kept telling them as well. Surely they'll have this moment. And all but one of them said, oh, that sounds like nonsense. <laughs> Terrible, right? All right. So, uh, but they found purpose. I love this. Immediately went from puzzled to purpose. And I believe God wants to do that in your life today. If you're wondering, what on earth am I here for? What is God's plan for my life? It's real interesting. Uh, three days a week, I take my daughter to school, and sometimes we have enlightening conversations. Uh, and we were listening to uh, the radio, and the DJs were talking about uh, what they wanted to be when they grew up. And so my daughter turns to me in this moment and says, Dad, when you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? And so I said, well, um, and there's like a newspaper. I have a front page of the newspaper in my little hometown where um, I could show her this, but I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> and she laughed <laughs> a lot. <laughs> like, you know, one of those like, hey, yeah, that's kind of funny. No, this was like... Dad, that's like hilarious because it never happened kind of laugh. And I was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Could have happened, all right? Uh, but, you know, we all have this dream growing up. And as you go through life, some of you, that dream comes to fruition. Some of, the, some of you, those dreams change. But, but here's, here's the important point. I don't know what you want to be when you grow up. But no matter what you do, God has a beautiful plan for your life. It's full of purpose and meaning, and you can only find it in him. Just as the women at the tomb found purpose immediately, let's go tell someone. He wants to do that in your life beginning today. I believe that. You are here to have first a relationship. Everyone here, you, God has a plan for you first to have a relationship with him. That's the number one plan. And once you find that, to, to know him, to love him, and to be loved, then after that, God begins to orchestrate and order your steps to exactly what he wants to do, wherever it is, how he wants you to love people and testify about him. So Jesus wants to move you from puzzled to purpose. And the last thing, number three, Jesus wants to move you from disbelief to wonder. Disbelief to wonder. Listen to this. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. Then Peter went home again, wondering what happened. That's the very end of our passage there. It sounded like nonsense. You know, uh, when I was thinking about, uh, when I was looking at this, this word nonsense, the Greek term is actually, it was a medical term 
that Luke, uh, who was Greek, was using this term. And it was a medical term for someone with a fever who is delirious and babbling. So think about, uh, have you ever witnessed someone coming out of anesthesia, a family member going for dental work, right? Anybody have that? Anybody have that? Did you video it and share it with me? Yes. <laughs> It's gold, right? We had to video that, right? So that's what they thought at first. Like, no way. Jesus is alive. We watched him cru be crucified. We watched him go through all that pain and death. We saw him go in there. And that stone, and by the way, that stone that was rolled away by the angels um, was somewhere between 2,000 to 4,000 pounds. That stone. So whatever it is in your life that you think this will never change, Jesus says, hold on. I can change that. I can change that. Somebody needed to hear that today. You have something in your life that you think that'll never, ever be moved, that'll never, ever change, and Jesus says, hold that thought because I can do it. He's a miracle worker today. He's alive today. And he wants to move us from no way to, yeah, it's possible. A miracle is possible today. I want to expect God to do something great today. I want to expect that not only can I celebrate in this moment that Jesus is alive, but I can expect that he's going to do something He's going to do something through this mess. He's going to do a miracle. As the worship team comes, I want to, uh, I want to go back to this little, little phrase. It says, Peter jumped up and ran. I love that. And if you look at the other accounts, so there's four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's other accounts that give us more details. And Luke only focused on Peter, but what we know from the other uh, Gospels is, is, is that it was Peter and John, and they raced to get there. They raced to get there. And when I think about Peter, though, why did he jump up and run? Why? Why was this, why was this, hey, I, I got to find out. All the rest of them are like, this is nonsense. And Peter's like, I want to find out. I started thinking about Peter's last 48 hours or so. And I was thinking about this. Uh, uh, there's, there's a new wonderful digital invention. And it's, uh, if you're watching anything, on your phone, online, and it's this button, right? This little button, right? You can rewind. Or for, there was once a time when we had these things called VCRs, and you, it was like you push that button, and it, it was, you, you, you couldn't do this, right? You just rewind 10 seconds. If that was like a 10-hour button, if Peter hit that button like four times, he'd have a lot of hurt and shame that he was responsible for. And I want to review it for you. Peter's condition at this point, when he hears this news, Friday, he had went with the disciples and, and, and Jesus had said, hey, um, I need your help. I need you to pray for me. He knew what was coming. They didn't. Would you all pray for me? He went and he left the disciples and he came back and they fell asleep on him. And he had fallen asleep on his job. And the one thing that Jesus asked for him then, as Jesus was arrested after that, Peter drew his sword and cut off someone's ear in anger. Not his best moment. Jesus healed that man in that moment. Finally, that night, after Jesus was taken away, he was asked three times, do you know this Jesus? Aren't you one of his followers? And all three times, he denied it. He had kind of a bad weekend. Tough. For some of you, maybe your disbelief is rooted in your last 10 days or maybe your last 10 months or last 10 years or maybe just one moment. But Jesus' hope is available because of his grace, the amazing grace. And because he's alive, P 
Peter ran to the tomb with John. Why? Because he was looking for hope. He was hungry for hope. He found it. Look at this scripture. This is Peter's own words. 1 Peter uh, 1, uh, verses 3 through 4. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Here he is testifying and living with great expectation. Why? Because he found hope, and you can find it today too. If you'll bow your heads with me just for a moment, I want to give you an invitation for hope. If you're hungry for hope and purpose, today can be your day where you can make a, make a commitment to follow Jesus. And if that's you, Right now, if you would agree with this prayer, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and that you did rise again on the third day. You are alive, and Lord, I want to follow you. I want to step in to the new and leave the old behind. I want to live with life and purpose. Come into my heart. Change me beginning today. If that's you and you've made this prayer and you've agreed with this prayer, just slip up your hand and say, that's me. Yes, 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 yes. Lord, I thank you for these new steps of faith. And I pray, God, for everyone who's making this step and then all those here in this room, maybe are struggling with something that needs to be moved, I pray for miracles and that we would begin to expect more celebration, but live with it every day because you are alive. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship.